welcome to, I think it's video number eight now in the Miniature Heroes series. Um, yeah, as you, as you can see, the table's a little bit different today. Um, it's how it's normally set up for uh, for my painting endeavours and bits and pieces, which I hope to share a little bit with you today. Um, making this video, uh, I haven't had a lot of it. It's been ever so hot here in the UK, um, abnormally so, and I'm not one for a great lover of heat at the best of times, but... Uh, there we go, we've got to put up with it. Uh, meant to be thunderstorms tonight apparently, so we'll see if that comes. Anyway, I thought we'd have a little bit of a chat about priming and some of the things, you know, that you can and can't do. Um, and really things that you need to consider before you start priming a miniature, because it's going to affect everything else that you do. And basically it's the first step you've got to get, you've got to get right with a brush. One of them. So here he is. Here's Mason. As you can see, he's all he's all nice and shiny. Now this is one of my um, cheap tips. You can get very nice miniature holders and uh, specialist devices for holding miniatures. It's as well too. I used to for years. I used to hold the thing finger and thumb. Um, but it's best if you can mount it on something where you will hold it. And this is just a little piece of wood. I've turned up on the lathe. You could even use probably a bit of broom handle. Um, and plasticine. And the plasticine is sticky enough to hold Mason. And look, see, he's defying gravity there. And as, as a fa fairly weighty miniature, you could use blue tack. I dare say that would work. Um, but it's just a little cheap um, get out. I, I use it for all, all my painting stuff. Here's a old grenadier Kyrin that I'm uh, currently painting. Um, and he's mounted in the same manner. Uh, get him right, and uh, this is coming on quite well. This is a grenadier, an old grenadier, um, genie coming out of his lamp at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Yeah. But yeah, he's coming on. I wish it hadn't been so hot lately because I normally paint in the evenings and this room heats up a bit. But there we go. Anyway, back to priming. So here's Mason. There he is. He's ready for priming. Priming is very important because it provides effectively the key between the miniature and the paint. If you put paint straight on, it'll work, it won't, it won't look too bad, but it doesn't get the same sort of key. Primary specially designed so that when it goes on, it has got a slight roughness to it that allows the paint to grip and to key onto things. Um, metal miniatures, all right, do need priming. Resin, which can be very shiny and is probably the best of the three materials for holding detail, definitely needs priming. They say bones plastic doesn't need priming. I think if you want to do a good paint job, always prime. It doesn't take long. It's, well, it's not even a five minute job, but it does set you up for a better, better sort of paint job. And, you know, that's really what we're all aiming for. It won't be professional. Or professional, it won't be expert, keep using that word professional, but it will be that little bit better than all right, perhaps it would have been. So, primer, what to use? First off, we'll discuss colors because that's going to make a difference. So, I keep bringing him into shot. Look at that, he had a nice range. I do like that one. There you sit there. Colors do affect the, certainly the priming colors, what you how your top colors are going to behave. Now I'm going to go through the Reaper primers here because I sell them obviously and I've got them here. Reaper make three. They do black primer which is there, they do grey primer which is there and they do brush on primer which is their first one which is just about white. It's not a start white but it is just about white. If you prime your miniature with black primer all the colours that you subsequently put on it will appear darker. Simply because this is affecting them. Some colours resist it better than others, but they'll be the darker colours. As soon as you go to the lighter colours, like the yellows, whites and creams, black will pull them down. Black is very powerful. So bear that in mind. If you want to paint a nice, bright, shiny, all right, white skeleton, then priming him with black is probably not the best thing to do. That There is a school of thought with black primer is that if you do prime with black 
and you don't get your paint into all the little nooks and crannies and crevices. Of course, it's already doing your black lining for you. I think that's, nowadays, I don't think that's holding water quite so much as it used to. Um, but that used to be all the thing, you know, ply in black and it's already done things. If you're doing chaos warriors and grungy things, black is fine. But on the whole, I tend not to use, use black at all. White is the exact opposite. Now, black and white, as Shane reminds me constantly, they're not colours, they're shades. These, these are two, two shades, they're not part of the colour spectrum. This reflects all colours, this absorbs all colours. That's why you see them, see them as different things. White, on the other hand, will boost up light colours. So if you are doing a model that is light, shall we say, a high elf, which is very colourful, and you're using lots of yellows, creams and whites, priming in white is a good idea. If you're going to go over it with blacks and dulls, it'll do it, because black and blacks, browns, um, dark blues, they've all got a fair punch to them. Um, it'll work better than if you, if you tried to go over black with yellow. But again... Really, you need to sort of think what your model is going to be and hit, try and hit um, a bit more of a midway point. Now, this brings us to grey. And grey is the midway, really, between these two. And probably your best choice for 99% of what your priming is going to be. Unless you are doing something that's really dark and you need black or really light, Grey covers everything. It provides good detail, and you can see where you're going once you put your top coat on. Lighter colours do get pulled down a bit, but not as much as with black. Um, darker colours laugh this stuff off with, with no problem at all. So that's really what you sort of got to th think. What is your model trying to represent? Now, here with Mason... He is a ranger, and he's hooded. There you, are. you can see, you can see his, can you see his face? I'll get him in there. He's hooded, he's got his bow, he's obviously fairly intent. Now, rangers creep around forests and things. Um, they're generally dark in the shadows. They're quite stealthy, I always think. Um, probably the stealthiest of the fighter classes. And generally don't want to be seen too much. So I'm thinking he's going to be probably Darker greens, browns, um, I don't suppose it'll be black, but there's not going to be a lot of light colours. His cloak will be a dark colour to blend in, obviously. Um, his tunic will probably be a sort of leather. His boots are obviously um, made out of a skin of some sort, so that's a, another leather. There's, there's all things like that to consider. That could possibly be a leather cuff for his um, bows, or brassier. I wouldn't have thought it would be metal. That, as I say, they want to be stealthy, they want to be able to move, but equally they want to be camouflaged. So he's going to be dull. Therefore, you could go black. I'm thinking black is going to make him a bit too dull. Um, so I will go for grey. And... That's as simple as that is, really. This is um, 299. This is Reaper Grey Primer. They brought it out a couple of three years back. And, yeah, it's it's fairly good stuff. I, I quite like it. It works all well with the Reaper paints. It works well with um, uh, the Contrast. There's a, there's a bottle of Contrast. And I have used it with, let's see, Model Colour and scale colour and yeah they, they they all work as well so that's not a problem so it's it's a good universal thing a lot of people like to prime with a rattle can a spray can you know and go like that that is fine uh and you can get some get some good effects by it but it's undercuts like the areas under here as you can see see down there underneath the arm and things. Generally the spray is coming in at an angle and it'll hit the top areas quite nicely. But these more hidden areas you've sort of got to get under and bits. It can be a bit problematic. Another thing people like to do and one of the things that they mainly probably buy an airbrush for is priming. Airbrushes do give you that bit more control to get under and Shane will argue with me to, to blue in the teeth but he loves them. He's, he's a wizard with an airbrush 
and can practically paint a miniature with one. I mean, he just goes, pss, 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 that's, 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 this is done. Um, hopefully, oh, yeah, we've, we've, we've sort of worked out what we're going to do on our little video it. Um, we've just got to get around to filming. As I say, it's been ever so hot. Um, and all right, Shane with an Optivisor on and me, me, you know, obviously providing comments and telling them how to do it. <clears throat> uh, well, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a bit more difficult in the, in the heat. So we're not going to do that so much. Um, when it's cooler, then we're going to give it a go. It will probably be a monumental disaster, but we will try. We will see how it goes. But for this, I'm going to do what I always do, and that is prime with a brush. And this this is probably the least positive way of doing things. Certainly the pros probably don't do it, because they like to get a nice thin coat. But I find it works all right. Um, if you haven't got an airbrush, if you don't want to go outside and cut squirt and things with a rattle can, this is the most workshop or painting desk friendly way of doing things. And so this is why we have the painting ensemble here. Now, I don't have a wet palette. I have a tile, um, which I pop things on. What I do have is this nice weld thing. Uh, I've, I've got six of these. These come from an art supply. They're China. They're made out of they made out of China, but they do provide you with 12 wells, and you just pop your paint in there, and you can mix about and fiddle about with it as you want, and then you can just wash them up, and uh, away it goes, and then you recycle, and off you go again. These China things are better than the plastic, simply because you can wash them up and keep going and going and going. The plastic ones do tend to scratch a little bit sometimes, and then the paint gets grained in and it's just not so nice and these are nice and compact as well so so that that's quite nice 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 little sort of old school thing uh right so we better do something oh yes right so gray primer give it a shake you see a lot of funny gadgets people are great at utilizing jigsaws i don't know if you've seen this online but they they utilize a jigsaw and they sort of modify the blade so that this is taped to it or whatever and then they go up and down up and down up and down up and down like this at about 900 miles an hour i don't know if it mixes the paint well i really don't um this this is enough give it a bit of a shake that'll do now we will pour some of this into the well there we go now what i will do with this is a little bit of a fudge that Shane has taught me. Now, this, this is an old medicine bottle, but it's got a dropper on it. What it is, it contains a special witch's brew of one-third flow improver, one-third drying retarder, and one-third clear water. And what this does, effectively, it gives you the same workability, only in a more controlled manner, as what you get on a wet palette. You just add a drop or two of this, there you go, and it dilutes the paint without washing it out, which is if you just add straight water, that's what will happen, and you start getting tide marks. It also retards the drying properties of the paint so that you can blend and you can effectively push the paint about and fiddle about with it till you've got it where you like. Um, and thirdly, it just makes it cover that little bit nicer. So we, we've popped them in there. Now we need a mixing brush. Where's one of the sorts? There we go. Old Citadel brush. And we'll just mix all that together. That just thins the primer down that little bit so it's going to flow that bit better. There we go. There we go. Wash that out. I tend to use this for priming. This is... Um, Nothing's bad. It's a Windsor and Newton Galleria, but it's like one stroke, they call it. But it, it's a synthetic bristle. It doesn't got to be too special for priming. And you just dip a little bit in there, not too much. And, uh, dee -dee, and then you just start priming mason. And this is all you need to do. What I will say is do let your primer dry properly. This, is, this Reaper primer is water-based. But it is slightly different to the paints because it does pong a little bit, so I don't quite know what they, what other bits and pieces they've got in it. But that's just all what you do. And in doing it this way, you also get to have a bit of an idea about 
all right the model and what it is and how it's all looking and painting and you know all the different bits and pieces of details because sometimes you miss things now look, that's coming up quite nice now can you see that and we'll do a bit on the back of his cloak but i mean you're getting the idea you just give it a good cunts over like that and um once he's dry he will have a nice matte surface which you can then start putting your paint on getting your base coats done and um then all right once all your base coats are done if you want to do i mean i, I sometimes do a base coat and then work on that bit and then leave something else for for, for a bit later on but you know in, in doing all those sort of things you can um prepare yourself for what you're going to do now you see this isn't taking very long is it all right people are going to say well if you'd had a spray can fitchy you'd have been done by now well yes i probably would but um if you're painting in your dining room table so you can get under here see that bit under there right under that. if you're painting on your dining room table you've just set up for an evening all right the kids have gone to bed the wife's watching coronation street or indeed the husband because we can't be sexist about this he might be a great coronation street fan um you don't really want to be spraying indoors you want a well ventilated area and it can be a bit of a pain and look there we go now i think well, i haven't got my optivizer on but i think he's just about done and so there we go oh, a bit on the quivers a bit up there so a little bit of an additive has just made that flow that just bit nicer we've got a nice even coverage and yeah i think mason's just about done so there you go that is a little well a few tips and bits and pieces of how i go about um, priming things and i hope you found it useful uh people are giving you generally giving me thumbs up on these so perhaps perhaps you are finding it useful if there's any other topic or bits and pieces you would like to know or see about the shop oh oh well I didn't, yeah i had to add one thing people like to know what does a triad paint triad look like right this because you only see the um uh, bits and pieces in the shop well, it's got the three colored bars that shows you the three complementary colors that are in the triad but this is what you actually get this is a reaper paint triad in its blister pack and what you get is the three complementary colors generally they all follow the codes and you can use one as the mid shade one will be highlight one will be dark and that's it that's that's what you get they, they're very good they're very popular these things so I do sell these at a discount Reaper's recommended retail price is £10 and I'm £8.75, um, which I think s and stuff is much the same because he started stocking these as well and he's obviously noticed my prices. Um, and um, yes, he thinks I don't notice, but I do. I, I, I notice these things. So if he's watching, um, toodle pip. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's really about it. So um, apart, from, apart from randomly thinking that I've got to include triads into this video, Please share if you like it. Um, subscribe to the channel. I'm up to 55 now, which I think is brilliant. If we get to 100, who knows? I might do a live stream or something. And yes, I shall subject my wit and wisdom to the to the wider, uh, wider multiverse or whatever it is. Internet, isn't it, really, I suppose? What's the difference between the World Wide Web and the Internet? Don't understand that bit never did but there we go anyway i shall edit this now and hopefully you've you've seen a few bits and pieces of how things are done and it's given you some ideas enjoy your painting don't stress about it always some um, always keep in mind that it's a hobby and um all right if it don't turn up well you can always strip it it's no big deal ah uh, yeah enough waffle i shall go now doodle pet